I love this scripture in 2 Corinthians 3.18. And it says this, family, it said, but we all with open faith, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Come on, is there anybody in here that believes that we serve a God who takes us from glory to glory? See, the enemy will, 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 will love to, to make you focus in on the in-between. That maybe there was a season in your life that you thought was glory, but now you're trying to get back to glory. But here's the beautiful thing that the enemy is a liar, that he's the father of all lies, that whatever he's telling you today, understand there's an opposite. And his name is Jesus. And Jesus is always here to take us from glory to glory. So in other words, family, there is no in-between with Jesus. He's always in the in-between. He's always from glory to glory. He's always walking you in the right direction. You are not walking towards Jesus. Jesus is right here with you today. So right in the middle of your situation that you're waiting on to get better, Jesus, glory is right here. He keeps on getting better. When Jesus shows up, better shows up. When Jesus shows up, the breakthrough shows up. Come on, come on, church, speak to me this morning. When Jesus shows up, whatever the dysfunction may seem that's in your life, just know the Creator is in charge. The Creator is still right here. The Creator has a way for you. The Creator is a way maker. He is the Creator. He's always creating. He's always making a way. So wherever you feel as though that there's the destruction coming towards you, understand this today, my friend. Glory to glory. Glory's here today. Come on, can we begin to stretch up our hands towards heaven? Oh, come on, family, just begin to release the sound of heaven in here. Understanding that glory is present right now. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We understand that there's, there's nothing that we can do without you. That, that, that your glory is everything that we need. Even Moses said, whatever you, whatever you're getting ready to do, don't do it without me because I don't do it without your glory. Don't do it without your presence. Whatever you're getting ready to do in here, Lord God, we need your glory. For every family that's present in here right now, we, they need your glory. For every child that's in here right now, they, they need your glory for, for whatever decision that they're, that they're getting ready to make. They need your glory. Rest in this place right now. Fill us up with everything that we need, and we need is you. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, you guys can go ahead and be seated. Amen. Such an incredible time. Come on. Have you guys been enjoying the month of July here at Celebration Church? Come on. Can we, can we put our hands together? Come on. I'm telling you, we are, we're just a part of such an amazing family. And what some of the things I love about it, come on, even early this month, come on, we, we get to hear from some incredible communicators. Come on. Leah Pickett preached a phenomenal message. Come on. Can we put up? We can put our hands together. Amen. Come on. Don't you guys love hearing from Pastor Brenda? Come on. Come on, come on. Hopefully, hopefully the, the, the last 10%, hopefully you, you deal with me every other week and, and all of that. Hopefully it's not too bad on your ears. But today, family, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud to announce today we're a part of a, such a big family. If you're new here at Celebration Church, maybe your first time guest, what I love about our Celebration family is that we're just not right here in the D.C. location. Come on. Come on, we, we can find ourselves in Orlando. Come on, anybody, come on, Pastor Pittman, Pastor Keith, and Pastor Megan. Come on, we love our Orlando family. We have family in North Carolina. We have family, come on, overseas. Come on, maybe you want to go to Zimbabwe. Maybe you want to go to Netherlands. Anybody want to go to Paris? Come on, we have locations all over the globe. It's what I love about our family here at Celebration. There's strength in the family. We have family down in our Jacksonville 
location as well. And we're getting ready to tune in to our, 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 our home base, our global senior pastor has a message, incredible message. I'm telling you, this message is going to blow you away. Get ready to, to tune in and, and lean in. It's going to be phenomenal. But right before we shift into it, come on, we have any middle school and high school students. You guys can go ahead and make your way. Your leaders are right over there in the hallway waiting for you. But come on, can we put our hands together? Come on, for Pastor Tim, who's getting ready to bring the message. Come on, family, take notes. Psalms 37, and we're going to begin reading at verse 23. We're going to read through 24, then we're going to pray. Then we'll unpack what God has for us in this moment. Psalms chapter 37, verse 27. Excuse me, verse 23. Psalms 37, verse 23, it says, The steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in their way. Though they fall, they shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth them with his hand. Can I read it again to you? The steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in their way. Though they fall, they shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth them with his hand. I want to preach to you for a moment from the subject matter walk it out walk it out come on turn to your neighbor tell your neighbor walk it out come on find somebody else tell them to walk it out walk it out walk it out uh, uh, let's pray spirit of the living god we ask that you would fall fresh in this moment we ask god that you would change us rearrange us transform us into what it is you desire for us to be and God, we promise to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, let me hear you shout amen. Amen. You can take your seats. Walk it out. I, I love this particular chapter in Psalms, David is writing and he's kind of reading our mail as he begins to go down the list of things that he's thinking about. The chapter really starts off with him talking about those who do evil things around us and how they seemingly get blessed. How many ever been there before? You look around, you say, God, how in the world are they getting the stuff I'm praying for? And I know I'm praying for it more than they are. How in the world are they getting the breakthroughs, the miracles, the raises? They not even saved, God. How many ever been there before? David says, he says in, in, in verse 21 of Psalm chapter 37, the wicked borrow and don't pay it back, but the righteous are generous and giving. One of the first indicators of being righteous is being generous and giving. He then says, those blessed by God will possess the land but those cursed by God will be cut off. And then he says, the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by the Lord. When we see that word steps, it's an indicator to us that this is going to be a process. In life, it would be easy for us to pray and there be no steps. But everything with God is ordained by steps. There's a process that God takes us through so that we can be prepared for the breakthrough that he's taking us to. 
See, God is not preparing your breakthrough. God is preparing you for your breakthrough. What God has already made for you, he did it before he even created you. He's making you now to be ready and mature enough to receive where he's taking you to. And the reason you ain't got it yet is because you still are in process. <laughs> I pray to God for strength. And God allowed me to steward seasons of tension and resistance to make me strong. <laughs> I prayed to God for courage and God put my enemies at my table. I prayed to God for wisdom and God allowed me to steward seasons of problems. I prayed to God for clarity and God allowed me to have things removed from my life that were distractions. I prayed to God for patience and God tested me with time. I got everything I prayed for. But I got it after process. <laughs> the steps of a good man or woman are ordered by God. Oh, I love what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. I walk by faith and not by Sight. If I had known that I would have to walk through what I am walking through and come out of what it is that I walk through to get to where God is taking me, I would have never started on this journey in the first place. But God said, I've already ordered your steps and I've already directed your path and I've already started you on your way. And if you put your faith in me and you walk by faith and not by sight, you'll get to where I'm taking you. And you'll appreciate where you're going. See, some of us are concentrating on the destination and God is focused on us. He's ordering our steps and we're trying to order our future. And God is saying, you're not ready for where I'm taking you. But if you can walk out the process, you'll see each step was ordained by me. Even the hard steps, even the steps of struggle, even the steps of debt, even the steps of doubt, even the oppositions and the enemies, every step is a divine step to Towards your destiny if you walk on the path that I've charted for you. And I wonder, is there anybody listening to me right now that says, come hell or high water, I'm going to walk it out. If it costs me everything, I'm going to walk it out. If it costs me some friends, I'm going to walk it out. If it costs me some family, I'm going to walk it out. If it costs me my job, I'm going to walk it out because I'm walking out the steps that God has ordained for me to walk out. I'm not talking to everybody, but I believe I'm talking to a few good men and women that can declare and decree my steps are ordered by the Lord. Oh, it's easy for us to have vision, but it's hard for us to be a visionary because oftentimes we dream of the finished product and we wake up to the reality. And between what we dream and what we see, there's something in the middle called process. And whatever God promises, he always takes us through a process to get to the promise. God told Moses that the children of Israel would come out of Egypt, but they had to walk it out. God told David that he would be king, but he had to walk it out. God told Abraham that he would be the father of many nations, but he had to walk it out. My question to you right now is, do you have what it takes to walk it out? <laughs> Some of you think God is forsaking you abandoned you, left you. And the reality is, is God is right there with you, waiting for you to take the first step. And when you take the first step, he tells you where to take the next step. And it doesn't take a stage for me to shout. It just takes a step. Because I understand that if God don't help me on my next step, I won't make it 
to where he desires for me to go. It don't take a stage for you to shout. All it takes is you remembering your last step. And some of you got things to shout about that you can't even testify about. Some of you got some stuff that you need to praise God for that you can't even speak of because you remember your last step. I wonder is there anybody in this place today that remember when you didn't have enough to get to where God was taking you, but he showed you how to step. And when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, your soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. The steps of a good man or woman are ordered by. Ooh, some of you remember when you used to shout because you had enough money to get your kids school books. Some of you used to remember when you had enough money to get gas to go on down the road. What has happened to us where we don't remember our steps? <laughs> you got to have your mind made up that you are going to walk it out. In order for you to walk it out, you must understand that this walk, this path, this journey, this walkway that God has you on is one of difficulty. And in order for you to make it, you have to do a few things. The first thing that you have to do, point number one, is keep a grateful heart. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20 says, Always give thanks for everything, good and the bad, mountaintops and valleys, friends and enemies, family and foe, seasons of much and seasons of lack. Every single season can teach you something if you have a grateful heart. When you're on this journey heading in the direction that God is calling you in, he orders your steps and he directs your path, but you determine your heart as you are walking it out. If you can have a heart of gratitude, he'll dictate your path and he'll give you direction and he'll show you what it looks like. And I'm so grateful that God doesn't show us what the journey looks like, but he does give us a glimpse of where we're headed to keep us encouraged with purpose so that we have power on this walk that we are walking out. Always give thanks for everything to God, our Father, in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. It doesn't take much for me to praise. It just takes me getting a preview of what's ahead. I haven't been to the actual theater in some time, but when we would frequent it, before the main show, there was always previews. <laughs> and the only thing previews were supposed to do was show you the highlights of what you can expect. You were in a season where God is showing you the preview. And if you can get excited about what's on the way, He'll take you to see the actual thing as you walk out this journey step by step and pace by pace and as you understand the pace of grace and who's directing your path, you can understand that the assignment, the destiny, the future that you're stepping into is greater than your past. How many of you are excited about what you've already seen to prepare you? for where you're going. I wish I had about 20 folk that got a little bit more excited than that, that understood you can't make your own future. You can't make your own destiny. You can't make a way out of no way. You can't set your feet on a right path. Only God can do that. When I have a grateful heart, it allows my vision to get a little clearer. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, the message translation reads, Through thick and thin, keep your hearts at attention in adoration before Christ. 
Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. It says, in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. It's okay if I give you a little scripture this morning. Keep on praying. Keep on being alert. Keep on being grateful. Listen to me. The grateful cannot fail, but the ungrateful cannot succeed. You want to know why you're failing in certain areas of your life? Maybe because it lacks gratitude. You want to understand why you're still stuck taking the same test? Because you failed the test time and time again. You want to know why it seems like you're stuck in processing? Because of the heart that you carry. The grateful cannot fail, but the ungrateful cannot succeed. In order for you to get to where God is calling you, you have to have a grateful heart. Why should I be grateful in hard times? I'm so glad that you asked. We must remain faithful and grateful in hard times because God's will gives me strength. Colossians chapter 1 verse 11, God says, I will strengthen you with great power and you will not give up when trouble comes but you will be patient then you will joyfully give thanks to the father I must be grateful in hard times because God's will gives me strength I must also be grateful in hard times because bad times can't change God's plan Scripture says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship, deeply reverencing God. He's asking, do you see what's on the inside of you? Do you see the gift that you carry? Do you see the grace that's on your life? Do you see the gifts and the talents that God has bestowed upon you? Do you see a, a, a preview of where you are going? Because if you can get a glimpse of where you're going, God says you have to have a praise that gives you a continual power to push you there. If you can get a glimpse of where you're going, you'll understand the purpose of the path that you are on. And let me help you understand this. The path that you are on is different from the path uh, of the person sitting beside you to your left and your right. So it's important that we understand that so we don't judge them based off of their praise because we don't know what obstacles and hurdles they had to jump over on the journey of their path. If you only knew what the person beside you has endured and, and persevered through and, and the hard times that they have came out of, if you only knew the things that they've prayed for that they are seeing and about to receive, if you only knew what the person beside you endured to make it to this space and place today, you would praise God with them, which brings me to point number two. In order for you to make it on this journey, you have to enlist a friend to walk with you. In order for you to make it on the road that God has set before you, you have to enlist a friend to walk with you. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 10, it says, Working together, if one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But people who are alone when they fall are in real trouble. Sometimes you need to get on the phone with people, not to gossip, but to pray. I remember there was a time where we, we had prayer partners that we could rely on to pray with us when we found ourselves in seasons of tests and trials that we didn't have to wor worry about talking about us after we hung up the phone. I remember there were people that we could count on that shouted with us when we walked through seasons of victory and covered us when we walked through seasons of defeat. I remember where, where there were times where we had faithful friends that we could rely on whenever we had a need or, or whenever they had a need. What happened to 
the season where we had relationships. Although we are more connected as a society and as a culture through technology, we are more disconnected than ever before. We're more, more self-centered than ever before. We're more self-conceited than ever before. And it's time for us as the body of Christ and as the church of the living God to surround ourselves with real relationships that dig deep into the life of the things that we have every single day, whether we have needs or whether we have blessings that we can share with those that have needs. And in order for you to walk out this path, you have to have real friends that can walk with you. How many of you are grateful for friends? When you find yourself in trouble, you need a real friend that will grab your hand and tell you everything is going to be all right. When you find yourself on the mountaintop, you need to have a friend that'll grab your hand and a shout with you for the victory that you received until they get the victory that they've been believing for. I wonder if I'm not talking to anybody that has somebody they can call on that gets excited about the things that they are excited about. The reality is, if they're not with me, in my seasons of struggle, you won't understand my praise in seasons of victory. You have to have people in your life that you can count on. The steps of a good man or woman are ordered by God. And scripture teaches us Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. That a righteous person may fall seven times, but they get back up again. Point number three is this. We must realize that missteps are how we learn. God is not looking for perfection, but he is looking for progress. He's not looking for you to run at the beginning, but he is looking for you to walk. He's not looking for you to be fast, but he is looking for you to be steady. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, the author and the teacher writes, the race is not given to the swift, nor the fight to the strong, which simply means that you being fast in and of itself won't get you to victory. And you being strong won't always win the battle for you because what you carry is not enough to get you to where God is carrying you. And I wonder, is there anybody listening to me right now that's grateful that when you couldn't carry yourself, you serve the God that carried you. When you couldn't push yourself, you serve the God that pushed you. When you couldn't get yourself over, you serve a God that got you over. When you couldn't get yourself through, you serve a God that got you through. And when you were faithless, he remained faithful. And I wonder, is there anybody that can give God 30 seconds of real good praise? Because when you felt like this, up, he put a new battery in your back and said, keep on walking, baby. You're one step closer. You're one step closer. You're one step closer. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. I said, you're one step closer. Do you have what it takes to continue to walk it out? Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you got to keep walking. You can't stop here. You got to keep walking. I know you're tired. You got to keep walking. I know you feel like giving up. You got to keep walking. I know you feel like throwing in the towel. But if you keep on walking, he said he or she that gets weary, he'll give strength to. Don't get weary in your well-doing. For if you faint, 
there's a process that's going to cost you something, but you'll receive a crown of righteousness if you faint not. I know the season may cost you everything, but you receive more than what you lost if you faint not. I know you may be in pain right now, but what God has for you is better than the season you're coming out of if you faint. Come on, find somebody, tell them you can't stop here. You, you can't stop. You got to keep on going. You, you got to keep on going. You need to find just somebody that can encourage you when you feel like giving up. I, I know you don't know my name. I, I know you don't know my story, but I believe that you can keep on walking. I got to keep on walking. I, I know your legs are tired, but each step is ordered by God and I know you may be in pain but God has already ordered your steps and I know you don't see where you're walking but that's why we walk by faith and not by sight I can't see where I'm going but God I'll trust you Woo, it hurts God but God I'll trust you it's painful God but I'll trust you It's cost me some friends and some family, but God, I'll trust you. He doesn't say how big the steps are. He just says, every step is ordered by the Lord. I know you don't got enough strength to run, but you got enough strength to step. And, and I know each step is a step of faith, but you got to keep on stepping. And, and if you can step on the path that he has in front of you, he said, I'll give you a crown of righteousness. And, and Paul says, I, I press towards the mark of the high calling. I, I press over stress. I press over worry. I press over fear. I press over frustration. I press over doubt. I got to keep on pressing. Somebody shall walk it out. Walk, walk it out. Job chapter 14, verse 16 says, you, you watch over every step that I take. But you don't keep track of my missteps. Though you may stumble and fall seven times, you got to get back up again. He's not counting how many times you've fallen. He, he counts how many times you get up. He, he's not counting how many times you trip. He's counting how many steps you're taking. And if you've got enough courage to keep on stepping, he says, i got enough power to keep on pushing. And I wonder, is there anybody listening to me right now that says my faith is in the Lord? I believe he's ordered my steps, and I know that he's directing my path. Philippians chapter 3 verse 4 he says I press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus first Corinthians chapter 9 verse 26 Paul says I I move straight towards the goal with purpose in every step and I know they may seem like baby steps, but they are steps of purpose. And I know it may seem like you're walking slow, but each step is a step of purpose. And I know it seems like people are racing past you, but the race is not given to the swift or to the fast. The race is given to the one who endures until the end. And, and I'm telling you, if you can pace yourself on the journey that God has in front of you, he says, I'll ordain and order every single step. And some of you, saying God I, I don't have what it takes and God is saying can you can you keep walking it out and can you keep putting one foot in in front of the other and can you keep on believing and 
and keep, can you keep on hoping and, and putting your trust in me if you, if you take one step I give you the strength to take another and, and I give you the strength to take another and before you know it you'll look back over where you come from here and say God if it had not been for you on my side where in the world would I be I want you to stand on your feet Put your hands on your own chest and you tell your own self, I got to keep walking it out. Some of you right now need to start taking steps in your seat of faith. There's a sign that I can't stop. I may be tired, but I can't quit. I may, I, I may feel like throwing in the towel, but this is not my season to stop. The Word of God says in the same chapter, Psalms 37, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. And, and I never have seen God abandon or forsaken me. Every single test, He's provided a, prob a solution for it. Every single problem, He's provided an answer for I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Come on, stretch those hands towards heaven. Just start moving your feet right now in your seat saying, God, I trust you. <laughs> oh, God, I believe in you. And, and I know I can't see how this thing ends, but God, I believe you are ordering my steps. So I press. So I press. <laughs> so I press towards the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. <laughs> And some of you need to get out in the aisle right now and just start walking and, and demonstrating in faith that I'm not giving up. And, that I may be tired, but there ain't no quitting me. And, and I understand what it may look like, but I, I gotta walk it out. I, I gotta keep on going. I can't stop here. I'm reminded then Jericho God told them in order for some things to come down in your life, you got to walk it out. <laughs> and I know it may seem like you're walking endlessly and aimlessly, but each step is ordered by me. <laughs> and every step you take is a step of destiny. And, and if you've got enough strength to walk, i got enough strength to provide. Come on, somebody just needs to walk right now. So, somebody just needs to move out of your seat and walk right now. I, I'm walking and I'm, I'm walking it out. And I, I believe that God is still faithful. I don't feel like walking. Thank God we're not led by our feelings. <laughs> my feelings may change, but my God doesn't. My feelings may sway, but my God doesn't. My feelings are fleeting, but my God isn't. Is there anybody that says I can push beyond what I feel and I can chase after God with each step of destiny? I can chase after God with each step of purpose. Come on, let the redeemed of the Lord I remember after I ruptured my Achilles six months ago one of the first questions I asked my surgeon is doc when can I run again said normally it takes about nine to ten months but before you run you got to walk because in your walk 
it builds stamina in your muscles for your run. And I know it may seem like you're moving slow right now, but you're building stamina in the spirit for your run. And I know it's oh, painful. Yeah. that God created he created with instructions for a purpose and the purpose of your life is to give God your life back so if you're still listening to me and you're still doing your own thing and you're still being led by your own will and led by your own emotions, today is your day to return back to the person that made you. Today is a day that you step away from yourself and step closer to the will of God. He is ordering your steps and he is directing your path, but you gotta keep on walking. You gotta walk this thing out, baby. And you can't stop where you are. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. He said, I'll be with you until the very end of all time. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, walk it out. Come on, find just somebody else that will agree with you a little bit better than that and say, walk it out. Now you agree with yourself and you high five yourself and you tell yourself, God has not brought me this far to leave me. God has brought me here to keep on walking and give God 30 seconds of real good praise. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Stretch those hands. Woo. I feel breakthrough in the room. I feel miracles in the room. <laughs> I feel manifestation in the room. Come on, some of you just need to take a step of faith right there. God, I receive it. God, I step into my new season. I, I step you away from the old it. me and I step into the new me. I, I am becoming everything you want me to become. And God, I won't leave this moment without getting what I came for. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. If you know that you've been away from God and you desperately need him to ordain your steps so that you can walk out this life with him. I want you to shoot both hands up right now. All over the room, if you're online, I want you to put it in the chats. I want to walk it out with God. See all those hands. I want you to repeat this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. Not by might, not by will, not by strength, but by your spirit. Do I have the ability to walk this life out with you? I repent and I turn away from sin. And I accept that I am now a new creation found in you. I confess with my mouth that you are my savior. And I believe in my heart that you are raised from the dead just for me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 
Come on, guys, take a deep breath in and then release it. Come on, take a deep breath in and then release it. I kept hearing the Lord say second wind. It's what the runners get when they get a burst of endurance to run the race. God, I thank you, Lord God, that we're catching our second wind, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for community, Lord God, that's coming alongside of us, Father, and helping us to run, helping us to endure, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for relationships, Lord God, that you yourself has orchestrated, Lord God, that can help us, Lord God, run this race, Lord God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you are the lifter up of our heads, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that there is no lack in our lives, Father. I thank Thank you, Lord, that you are ordering our steps, Father. Help us to be patient, Lord God, when we don't see the full picture, Father. Help us to lean on you, Lord God, for vision, for endurance, for strength, Lord God, for wisdom, Lord God, for intellect, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that you have prepared the way for us, Lord God. I pray that no weapon formed against us will prosper, Lord God, but what is for us will be for us, Lord God. I pray that you open doors that no man can shut. I pray, Lord God, that you give us strength like never before, Lord God. I thank you for the season we're walking in and the one to come, Lord God. I pray that you pave a way, Lord God, like no other. I pray that we rest in you. I pray we trust you. I pray that you put our minds at rest and give us a peace beyond measure. I pray that you be our safety net. When our knees want to buckle, I pray that they only bend in prayer and worship. I pray, Lord God, that you keep our children and our children's children. I pray that our blessings will flow down lineages in the name of Jesus. I thank you because you are a loving Savior and there is none like you. It is in Jesus' name I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice will be covered. I pray that God will give you visions and dreams that will give you endurance to keep running. I pray that your eyes will be open to what God has spoken over you. I pray that the enemy's voice will be shut. I pray that everyone that is assigned to your life will speak what thus saith the Lord and nothing less. I mute the sound of the enemy. I mute the adversary in the name of Jesus. And I pray that God will shall be done in your life. It is in Jesus name I pray. Amen. 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 Come on, family. Come on. Do you receive that prayer today? Come on. Amen. 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 Come on. It feels good in here, Pastor Brenda. It feels good in here. Come on. Well, hey, guys, my name is Anthony. This is my beautiful wife, Pastor Brenda. Come on. We have the awesome privilege of being lead pastors here. Does it feel good in here, family? Come on. For all of our first time guests, uh, we just want to say thank you guys so much for choosing to worship with us. Come on, home folks. Can we do that again? Come on. Can we show some love to all of our first time guests? Hey, maybe online or if you're in person on your way out, definitely feel free to stop by our Connect station for our online family. Just click right there. In the description box, click on the connect card. We would, we would love to hear from you. But let's stay right here in this posture of worship with the bringing of our tithes and the giving of our offering. And I want to say, church, uh, I just want to thank you guys. I want to commend you for your generosity, just your generosity of creating an atmosphere like this. Through your giving, lives are being changed. It's through your giving that we're able to come into a movie theater and we can feel the tangible presence of Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is the beautiful thing, even for our online family, as you guys are giving our partnerships that we go out to do in the community, even through Carpenter and Shelter. There's lives are being changed. And I want you guys to know that, hey, through your giving, here it is, you're making a difference. Let's continue to lead the charge family, even for some things that we have coming up uh, for the third and fourth quarter of the year. We're not going to share just yet, but I want to say it's because of your generosity. Let's continue to create a place where people feel the love of God, where people are known by God, that God knows your name, that God knows your life, that God knows your story. This is what we have here at Celebration Church. And I just want to thank you guys through your giving. So that as we lift up our giving and our offering, let's pray over the Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you that we have the opportunity to, to sow a seed. You give seed to the sower. So we thank you for every seed that's placed in our hand. Lord God, show us how to be great stewards 
Show us how to sow. Show us as we put our faith into you, Lord God, that every seed that goes down into the dirt, that it brings up great roots of a harvest. You give seed to the soil. You're the only one that can bless it. It is in a matchless name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. So, amen. Great news to share. So back in January, we decided that every fifth Sunday, we would go outside of these four walls and partner with our community. And um, we would serve. So we have an opportunity where you can go online and select an opportunity to come out and serve with us. Come partner with us in the community. Help us to give back and love on our community. Come on, I love it, I love it. So hey, come on, friendly, friendly reminder, guys. Next Sunday, come on, look at your neighbor. We will not be here next Sunday. Come on, don't break my heart and show up here next Sunday. We're going to be serving in the community. So as Pastor Brenda mentioned, come on, all of the information is online. Please, please, come on, do you do your a favor, sign up. We would love to see your beautiful faces, but we will not be here next Sunday. But in August, we'll definitely be back, and God is going to meet us here. Amen? Amen. Let me pray over you. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. Thank you so much for shining your face towards us. Thank you for always bringing your grace right here in front of us. Throughout all of this um, week, Lord God, give us your grace. Give us your countenance. May your face always shine upon Celebration Church D.C., it is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. 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 Guys, we love you so much. Enjoy your week. See you in two weeks, but not see you Sunday. <laughs>